Welcome to BTI, that's Bible Training Institute. We open the scriptures every week, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Study with us and learn how to know God as a close, intimate, and personal friend, and learn what is soon to come upon this world. How do we know the difference between meekness, or what is the opposite of meek? What is the opposite of meek? Let me say that. Pride. So you're over here, you have pride. So you have pride versus meekness and humility. Now, what does pride, what is the language of pride? Does anybody know the language of pride? Pride, pride has a language. Three words. Look at me. Look at me. A biblical day has how many parts? Two parts. So the Day of Atonement, how many parts? So in the type, the Day of Atonement had two parts. Question. In the anti-type, how many parts does the Day of Atonement have? Two, two parts. parts. Two parts. So then, if the devil understands that the literal Day of Atonement has two parts, he knows how to make it never come to an end. Because the only way that his head can be crushed is that the Day of Atonement must come to an end. Because the Bible says at the end of reconciling the sanctuary, he leaves the most holy place. That's what Leviticus says. At the end, he used that word, the end. So now my brothers and sisters, then the devil has studied the Hebrew scriptures and he recognized if I can stop the day of atonement from coming to an end, I can stop Jesus from leaving the most holy place. And then he can never crush my head. And if the time runs out, I will win. By technicality. Because Jesus said, I'm going to do it on time. What would have happened if Jesus didn't die on time? What would have happened if Jesus had died 302 on Friday evening? It would have been too late. He had to die at 3 p.m. on time. The Bible says so. So my brothers and sisters, what happens if Jesus doesn't finish the work of the day of atonement on the night cometh when no man can work? He's got to finish his work on time in order to win the great controversy. And only seven day Adventists have a key to understand this. Now, my brothers and sisters, now the question is, what would bring the Day of Atonement? How many, how many years has passed since October 22nd, 1844? Because what are the two parts of the Day of Atonement? What are the two parts? The judgment of the what? And the judgment of the living. That's the beginning and that's the ending. The judgment begins with what? The dead. And it ends with what? Now, how do you know that? How do you know that judgment begins? How do you know judgment doesn't begin with the living? Because the Bible, almost in every case, when the Bible says he's the judge, it says he's the judge of the quick and the dead. So it puts living first and then the dead. So how do we know that the judgment started not with the living, but it started with the dead? Well, these are questions. I'm not, I'm not, we're not studying that right now. <laughs> but these are questions that you need to bear me be, because, see, this is what the world is confused on as well. You and I need to understand that. But it started with the dead. We're going to prove that another time. But it says that the books of the record are open in the judgment. The lives of all who have believed on Jesus come up and reveal before, before God. Beginning with those who what? First lived upon the earth. Our advocate presents the cases of what? Each successive generation. So he goes generation by generation. And then it says and closes with the living. So he ends the judgment with the living. You know that used to be in our hymnal. The judgment has said. The books will be open. Do you know it says that one of the standards says first the judgment of the dead, then it talks about the judgment of the living. In the, in the, in the hymn itself, but it's not in the new hymnal today. And then today we don't even, sometimes we don't even use hymnals no more. Now this says and closes with the living. So in the day of atonement, it begins with the judgment of the dead, that's the evening. It closes with the judgment of the living, that's the morning. And then he can leave the most holy place. Are you following? Yes. Now my brothers and sisters, what event Brings us to the judgment of the living. Someone says, well, how long has it been judging the dead from 1844? How long was that? A hundred and what? Seventy-nine years plus and counting as after October. Now, my brother says, someone says, well, well, then he has to be on the judgment of the living. Am I right? What moves the biblical day of atonement is not merely the passing of time, but what sets the time for the day of atonement is also the events that transpire. The what? Yes. Now I'm going to tell you now. We're not studying. But I'm going to tell you now. Inspiration tells us what that event is that brings them out. It says there is no time now to fill the mind with theories of what is properly called what? Higher, Higher education. education. 
The time devoted to that which does not tend to assimilate the soul to the likeness of Christ is so much time lost for we, it's time is world education. We don't want to waste no more time in that. It says this we cannot afford for every moment is freighted with eternal interest. Now let's read this together. Now, when the great work of judging the living is about to begin. Now, what is what event is the prophet pointing us to? If you were blessed by this study and would like to be a part of the BTI, that's Bible Training Institute, simply have your Bible pen and paper handy and check out our weekly studies by logging on to molministry.com forward slash BTI. Also, tune in every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the latest Maranatha.